Here's the stretch by Robinson. The 3-0 pitch. Swing a low and drive! There it is! Number 500! The career 500 home run for Michael Jack Smith! And the Phillies have regained the lead in Pittsburgh. 8-6. And the Phillies dug out to pour the out to home play. Phillies Talk Podcast is now listener supported. Just go to our Patreon page at Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com forward slash Phillies, and you can sponsor this podcast. Welcome to Phillies Talk, the independent podcast from FightingPhillies.com, featuring news and views about Phillies baseball. Hi, this is Gary Matthews. You're listening to the Fighting Fields Phillies Podcast. And it's time to talk Phillies baseball again on the Phillies Talk Podcast, the longest running independent talk show on the internet talking all about the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, the Nationals are in town playing the Phillies. Wow, that's a surprise. It's only the uh, going to be the ninth time that these two teams get together by the end of this series. And uh, it's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday series at Philadelphia. And it's uh, turning out to be quite a rival- rivalry uh, between the Phillies and the Nationals, almost sort of like the Mets and the Phillies are when they come to town. A lot of National League East matchups in the first uh, five weeks of the season here. Uh, a lot of games against the Mets. And another big surprise for us, well, wow. next week, the Phillies go to Washington. So they'll have a sort of a home and home series uh, going on. Uh, the Seattle Mariners also coming into Philadelphia for a short two game series. Very rare to see the Mariners come into Philadelphia. So uh, if you get an opportunity, check those two teams out uh, May 9th and the 10th, Seattle and the Phillies. And of course, on May 11th, it's the ALS Phillies Festival. At Citizens Bank Park, encourage everybody that listens to the show, as we talked about with Matthew Vesey on our last program, uh, he has a blast when he goes there to the ALS Festival. And I've been a few times myself. I would really uh, recommend it. They have grab bags. I think the last time I went, there were $20 a piece. You get a nice um, grab bag with an item in it or two. Uh, usually it's uh, a collectible item, either a signed baseball or maybe a bat or something along those lines. Not everything, not every bag that you buy has the signed item in it, but uh, if you get lucky, you just might go home with a autographed baseball or something like I did one year. I only think I bought two bags that year, and I went home with a nice uh, baseball that I still have on my mantle. To this day, and as we also talked about, me and Matthew on the last program, take advantage of the autograph booths, and they usually have a special one with uh, either Charlie Manuel or a special guest, uh, the manager, possibly Pete McCannon, uh, possibly going to be making appearance as well at the ALS Festival. So check it out and make a good use of it. You never know how long. Uh, Some of the managers will be around the team. I had commented last time that I had a picture taken with Ruben Amaro and Pat Gillick, and of course those guys have now moved on from the Phillies. And it captured an important moment for me in Phillies history. There was two of the greatest uh, GMs that the Phillies have had, uh, in my opinion, Ruben Amaro, uh, a longtime Philadelphia name around the Phillies, uh, for better or worse, he, he was with the Phillies for a long time. Now he's with the Red Sox, but uh, it's just a great time to uh, sort of like a fan fest, but it's for charity, and that's even better, knowing that all of your dollars that you spend that evening will be going towards charity. And they have great silent auctions. You can go up to certain items and place a bid on them. Uh, jerseys, signed jerseys, things like that, and helmets. They even have uh, Eagles memorabilia there. So check it out. 
the Phillies ALS Festival. It's coming up on Thursday, and I'm not sure if I can make it this year, but uh, I encourage all of the listeners of Phillies Talk to check it out. A little bit later in this program, I'll be talking to Andrew Lang. He's with TalkNats.com. It's a great independent website that talks all about the Washington Nationals, a great community that they have uh, built there at TalkNats.com. So check that out if you want to do a little pre-scouting on the Nationals at any time uh, during the season. Pop on over to their website And I'll be talking with Andrew in just a few minutes on this program. But uh, the Washington Nationals, what what can you say about them? They're the best team in baseball. They're in first place in the National League East. As uh, we're going into play tonight, they're 19-9, and looking for the 20th win on the season. Uh, One of their best pitchers going tonight, Steven Strasburg, and If you remember just a few short years ago, he was one of the biggest names uh, to come down the pike and onto a team. He suffered an arm injury, and then he uh, got back to work for the Nationals, doing a great job. And the Nationals seem like they have it all together this year for some reason, and they're certainly playing like a great team. Uh, Maybe this will be the year we'll have to see what Andrew talks about with his team a little later on what he thinks uh, may happen in the future for the Nationals. Uh, They haven't been hit by very many injuries yet, though. And uh, Bryce Harper, Harper, rather, just in the last game, uh, suffered a a slight injury, so he was off on Friday night. Uh, We'll see how long he stays off of the field. Uh, Probably not too long. He'll probably be back into the series by the time it's over. And, of course, he loves to hit in Philadelphia. He's already had a great uh, sort of uh, few games here, so to speak. Always hate to see him come up to bat. But uh, another national that's been on fire is Ryan Zimmerman. He uh, entered Friday night's game hitting safely in 11 straight games, which is the longest hitting streak by a Nationals player this season. So Zimmerman's been on fire. Of course, uh, Jason Wirth uh, adding to the mix there. Not what he once was with the Phillies, uh, but he's still a pesky player that loves to play in Philadelphia. He knows this ballpark better than any other national player. He knows what he has to do to put it out of the park, and he's done that as well to the Phillies. Well, the Nationals offense leads the Major League baseball in nearly every category, including runs, hits, doubles, batting average, on-base percentage, slugging percentage, and OPS. So this is a team that's firing on all cylinders. A little bit later uh, in the interview I did with um, TalkNats.com, they talk very highly of the Phillies, so uh, they're obviously scouting the team uh, in the last Series with the Cubs, of course, they came close to winning a few times, but just could not pull off a series victory. In fact, they only won one out of the three games in Chicago. So it's been a tough road for the Phillies. Um, Nick Pavetta going for them tonight, though. So we'll have to see how his second major league start works out for him. And the Phillies just need to get a victory or two back together, get some uh, strength going, uh, get a little bit of confidence built back up in their bullpen. The bullpen's been ragged. It's been hit. It's been hurt. Uh, They need to shore that up, if not tonight, at some point during this series at least, uh, before the Seattle Mariners come to town. And then the Phillies have to face the best team in baseball again on May 12th, 13th, and 14th. And then they'll continue their road trip after Washington and go out to Texas to face the Rangers on May 16th, May 17th, and May 18th. And uh, that road trip even continues further. The 19th, 20th, and 21st, the Phillies are playing the Pittsburgh Pirates. So Phillies going out back on the road after this quick five-game homestand between the Washington Nationals over the weekend, 
and then a couple days next week against the Mariners. They'll be right back on the road. So hopefully everything goes well for the Phillies. They need to to find an answer here and start getting more victories so they can maintain their 500 status. They were up in second place there for a short time uh, last week, but uh, have since fallen down a little bit. So looking to uh, stop the bleeding so far in the Phillies. And I don't know if too many fans have that much faith that they're going to really do that greatly this year, but it's been awfully fun to see them at least uh, contend a little bit early on in this season. Well, I'm going to take a little break here on Phillies Talk. And on the other side of the commercial, we'll talk with Andrew Lang from TalkNats.com. Sponsor an ad on the Phillies Talk podcast. Support our show and let people know about your business. Email us today. Follow us on Twitter at Fightin' Phillies or on our website, FightinPhillies.com. Hi, this is Farley. And Mark from Baseball PhD. Thanks for listening to BaseballPodcast.net. Up next, another great episode of Phillies Talk. Hi, this is Gary Matthews. You're listening to Fightin' Phillies Talk Podcast. Brewtown Sports is your source for Brewers news and notes. Join Mr. Brewtown as he keeps you up to date on all the happenings of your Milwaukee Brewers and Major League Baseball. Follow the show on Facebook and Twitter, Brewtown Sports. Listen 24-7 at brewtownsports.podomatic.com. Hi, this is Gary Mack of Mets Musing, and you're listening to my good friend Rich Baxter on Phillies Talk. Right here on BaseballTalkRadio.com, the home of great baseball talk shows. And I want to welcome aboard to the program here from TalkNats.com, Mr. Andrew Lang. How you doing, Andrew? I'm doing fine. How are you? Thanks for having us on. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Well, your Nationals are the best team in baseball. How does that sound? Well, it all sounds good, but as we know, we're not even 30 days or 30 games into the season. So we're uh, we're just coming up on the one-fifth, uh, 20% kind of mark in the season. So we'll uh, we'll see. So far, so good. Yes, indeed. You can't argue with that kind of success. And uh, tell us a little bit about your site there, TalkNats.com. It's uh, like FightinPhillies.com. It's an independent site. I love it. It's got a lot of great uh, content to it. Talk a little bit about your website, TalkNats.com. Well, we're we're an independent site, like you said. Uh, we We do a lot of original content. We cover the minor leagues. We do... Uh, special features. Uh, we do the daily gamers, which uh, seem to be pretty popular. We're, uh, we're over a thousand comments a day, and somehow um, even the mesmerized people up there in New York drop by every once in a while, and we have some good back and forth going. We're, we're a moderated site, which makes us really different, where we keep things clean uh we're not like some of the other sites where we don't allow cursing we don't allow the infighting to go on and it's it's really worked out kind of to uh cut out a niche for us where people come there for good in, good analysis good banner and it's uh it's worked out well for us that's awesome well i'm glad everything is working well for the site it looks great Nationals firing on all cylinders, and it seems like the Nationals and the Phillies have uh, been playing quite a bit in the first uh, four weeks, five weeks of the season. Now we're we're getting all that National League East stuff out of the way early. Well, it looks like the Phillies and the Nationals are about to square off on another series. This one in Philadelphia, and we're getting all this National League East stuff out of us real soon this year. Yeah, the Phillies uh, look like a much improved team. So you guys, the way we look at it down here is uh, 
you're probably like we were back in 2009, 2010, just putting together some of the last pieces. And we can see with your payroll that you've really put yourselves in a position to add to what you have in the off season. So you have a really good looking young uh, core there that you put together, you know, Herrera, Hernandez, uh, Franco. So got a, got a real good start, a couple of good uh, free agents. And I think uh, you guys will be right there. As a matter of fact, some of our people, <clears throat> excuse me, were discussing uh, in, in the Cubs game uh, that they wanted the Cubs to win because they think the Phillies could be the Nationals' biggest competition this year. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, the Phillies have been one run away from winning a lot of games uh, so far in 2017, but they're still adding up to losses. So even though they may be playing better, uh, they're still just that little extra bit away from actually putting teams away. They just can't seem to do that very well. But your Nationals are are on a streak now. Uh, we're going to be facing Steven Strasburg this weekend, and he's going up against uh, a young phenom, Nick Pavetta, that just got called up from AAA. How are your starters doing this year so far? Yeah, we took a look at uh, Nick Pavetta. He's a hard thrower, 95 miles an hour. He'll get it up to uh, 97, sometimes even 98. His, his problem is making the mistake pitches. He's uh, He's got the slider. He's got uh, throws to curveball every once in a while. He's he look like a pretty decent prospect with the Nationals, and uh, he'll be our forever reminder. That's who we traded for a short-term rental on Jonathan Papelbon. Yeah, and Papelbon, you know, a guy that fans love to hate, obviously, but he got the job done. I would give anything for Jonathan Papelbon on the Phillies. We might have eight more wins if we had Papelbon on the team. What, this year eight more wins, or... Yeah, yeah, the the bullpen has blown probably five or six games already this year for the Phillies. Yeah, I I mean when you figure a good a good reliever is going to do a, well a real good reliever is going to do about 90% conversions for you. Um a decent one's going to do at least 80%. Um possibly there was an extra win or so. What I liked about Papelbon is his leadership in in the bullpen. The guys looked up to him. So there was some value there. Whatever happened, maybe one day we're going to find out. Some people think he was burned out by Dusty Baker pitching him three days in a row, and uh, it's it's a shame. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, the Nationals still have two ex-Phillies that were on the 2008 World Series team, of course, Jason Worth and Joe Blanton. And uh, Jason Worth is in the final year of that long, multi million dollar contract. How do national fans still feel about Jason Worth? I lost you again. How do national fans still feel about Jason Worth? Oh, about Jason Worth's contract? Yes. 2011 was a tough year because he, he didn't play well. The burden was on him. But he was really a a change for the clubhouse really for the team to bring a leadership and professionalism. And while he's probably been an overpay by a few million dollars overall, based on what he's returned in war, the intangibles, you can't really put a price on. And I think he's probably made it up. And I think most Nats fans um, are happy there's definitely the Nats fans for whatever reason, whether or not it's hair, his attitude, who knows, that never liked them. And it goes to the old thing, you can't please everybody. I personally like what he brings. They've um, they put him deeper in left field uh, to help him where he was having problems going back on the ball. That's made a real difference in his defense, his offense. Is he going to be a 250, 260 guy? Um, maybe, maybe a little bit more. That's that's kind of where he looks on batting average. The question is, can he end up 
over 800 in OPS where you want your corner outfielders to be. And, and we'll see. Uh, he's, he's been now hitting out of the two hole. He hasn't been, been good there. He's, he's been a little mini slump, but he seems to like to hit in Philadelphia. So we'll see if this weekend he kind of bounces back and, and adds back to his stats. That's an excellent analysis. I've always been a Jason Worth fan. Uh, in the last few years when he was growing his beard and his long hair, I don't don't know too much about that. But uh, this 2017 season certainly seems like it has Nationals written all over it. Is this the year that they finally get over the hump and make it deeper into the playoffs? I thought last year, if Strasburg didn't get injured and losing Wilson Ramos, that was a huge blow. The one place they couldn't afford an injury last year was going to be at catcher. Uh, Ryan Zimmerman wasn't playing great, so you had your first baseman with, with little production. You had catcher with really no production after Ramos. And Strasburg really made it to where you had Scherzer, Roark, you had to depend on Gio Gonzalez, plus one more, and it, it just really hurt the formation of, of the starters, and they just couldn't overcome that, even though they had a 2-1 lead against, against the Dodgers. Uh, they, it, just, it just didn't happen, and that, that, that was a shame. They seemed to be one player away. On our block, we were really hoping they were going to add either a shortstop or, or a center fielder. Uh, they could have put Trey Turner back at shortstop, put Danny Espinosa on the bench. Uh, that didn't happen. They added Melanson as the one missing piece, and that was really it. And everything looked great until the injuries happened. So you, you'd hope at July 31st that they look at picking up, you know, two key pieces and and really go for it. I mean, the Adam Eden injury is just devastating. So that that has me uh, somewhat concerned. Do I think the Nats will make the playoffs this year? Yes. How far will they go? That's, that's the question we're, we're going to have to see as it all comes together. Ryan right now is the best player in the major league, so – that's that's a really good sign. So they're getting you know big production from him. Murphy's doing his thing. Bryce Harper is doing his thing, even though he's sitting tonight with a little uh, groin pull. Uh, we're we're getting um, good production lately from Anthony Rendon. Matt Weeders has has been a pleasant surprise um, with the bat. The the pitching has been pretty consistent to where it was last year. Hopefully, Dusty Baker hasn't leaned too hard on him, and and that's that's kind of how we see it. Like like you said, the bullpen is probably the weakest point, but there's been some guys who have uh, stepped up, like Matt Albers, Jacob Turner, uh, Sean Kelly. At least closing has been good. He hasn't been great in setup, but in safe situations, he's uh, converted them all. So uh, so so far. It's uh, it's looking good, and the bench has been really good with uh, Adam Lynn. He's been he's been a great surprise back there. Yeah, it must be a, a great team to watch, especially when they're doing as well as they are. Even though, as you said, uh, Bryce Harper apparently sitting down possibly for tonight and maybe a couple more games so it can heal up. But uh, the Nationals certainly seem like they're on a roll, and it. You thought it was going to be Nationals against Mets uh, for the NL East, but now, as you said, the Phillies are doing a little bit better, maybe even the Marlins as time goes on. At least it's making it very uh, competitive for us National League East guys. Yeah, it's, they used to call it the NL least <laughs> with an L. Yeah. Now maybe people start referring it again to the NL East. Uh, the Mets... Mets um, Started off slow. I'm sure a lot of people surprised when they were in last place last week. Uh, they've had their share of injuries, so it's really given an opportunity to the Phillies, the Marlins, and the Braves to try to step things up. And in the head-to-head matchups, 
try to take advantage of the Mets. And the Phillies, as as you saw, they played the Cubs really tight. Uh, they easily could have won yesterday. So it, it, it just really shows you how close your team is. And that's why I think a lot of Nats fans would not be surprised if the surprise team in the NL East ends up being the Phillies and they take second place, which would probably prompt your ownership and your GM to maybe even make some moves at the trade deadline to be buyers. Is that what you think? Oh, yeah. I I absolutely love your optimism. I hope that they can turn their mistakes around. Uh, Like I was saying at the beginning of our interview, uh, the Phillies could have easily six or seven more wins hadn't it been for the bullpen blowing games and little mistakes here and there. But those are the things that add up and cost a ball club wins. It costs them a lot of stuff. It it costs them a lot of respect uh, sometimes on the field. But I love your optimism about the Phillies. And I'm talking with Andrew Lang from TalkNats.com. It's a great website. Check it out if you're interested in reading a little bit more about the Nationals. Yeah, well, th- thanks a lot for having me. Well, thank you very much. And I hope to be back soon. Thanks again. Yep, you have a great evening. Thanks for talking with us. That was Andrew Lang from the excellent Nationals blog. It's called TalkNats.com. You can also follow them on Twitter. They're at Talk Nats 2. So check them out. And we thank them for being on the program here on Phillies Talk Podcast and look forward to talking with them later in the year. And we had a little bit of audio technical difficulties during that interview, but I appreciate Andrew for being able to hang in there and finish out the interview. Uh, it was really good to talk about the Nationals. And hey, we're, we're going to be at the Nationals next week. So, uh, We've already faced them nine times as of the end of this series with the Nationals. And then next week, it's going to be 12 already. And we're only into the first six weeks of the season by then. I think it's a little bit much on the uh, Phillies Nationals uh, to start off the year. But, well, thanks for listening to this edition of Phillies Talk Podcast. And we'll talk to you again real soon on the next edition.